Ken Bostrom Ministries. Beginning January 2018, Ken Bostrom Ministries engaged in a whole new assignment by entering the airwaves of the world. Don't miss Ken and Mary Bostrom Ministries Live. So thank you for being with us today. I was just laughing with our, with our, um, with our guest today. And he said he listens to his wife, and I say my husband listens to his wife too. <laughs> so if mama ain't happy, nobody, nobody happy. Ain't happy. <laughs> so, thank you for being with us today, and I want to give a shout out to our production partners who make it possible for us to be on television. And God bless you. We just pray uh, that Psalms 115:14 that God will increase you more and more, you and your children. Amen. And one thing that Ken Bostrom Ministries uh, United in its Purpose broadcast is we love to bring you things about Israel, things about the Bible. And uh, today we are so happy to, to bring you uh, our guest straight from Israel. And he flew out of the pandemic over there into, into uh, Texas. And he's been ministering around here. And uh, we want to welcome today Avi Lipkin from Israel. Great to see you. And you are the, uh, you're in with the government now. Not yet. I am the founder of the Judeo-Christian Bible Block Party. Okay. When we get 144, 145,000 votes, we will get in with our first four members of the Knesset. There, awesome. There is a, what do you call it, a uh, threshold. Okay. If you get 140,000, you're not in. You've got to have at least get over that the amount for four, and then we get in with four. And we have at this time uh, eight candidates. Uh, we have, I'm the leader of the party, so I'm a, a, a rabbinic Jew, which you could say somewhere between conservative and orthodox. My number two is an Arabic-speaking Christian. My number three is an orthodox Jew. My number four is a messianic, David Friedman, Professor David Friedman. Okay. Uh, my number five, I, I don't even remember, but I'm just saying we have Russians, we have Ukrainians. Soon we're going to have Ethiopians joining us. Awesome. So we will have Ethiopian Jews and Christians yeah. as candidates. What I want is 50% Jewish candidates, 50% believers in Christ, and we are all working together as one family, as one unit. And let me say that the last few years, putting together this team has been such a pleasure because these people became my best friends. We became like family. So we've got to roll up our sleeves. We've got to get to new uh, communities we've never met. Uh, I did study Russian in college. Yes. Uh, so my Russian is horrible. And why did you pick Russian? I don't know. It was the Cold War. Okay. Uh, when oh, I studied okay. in the 60s, yeah. 70s. Mm -hmm. And my approach was either you befriend the enemy or you conquer the enemy. But either way, you've got to know the enemy. Yeah. Ignorance is not the solution. That's right. And so... Um, uh, so we have all these different language speakers. Israel's a crazy country because you've got a campaign in Hebrew, Arabic, English, Russian, and Amharic. Amharic is the language of Ethiopia. And um, here in America, you know, yeah, you've got a campaign in Spanish too, but it's mostly in English. Little country, five languages. And I'm hoping to do all my books in all these languages because wow. I, ha I have to get the message out to all the constituencies. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, uh, in America, they don't understand that because we have we have uh, two main parties over here, and you have how many? Well, at this time, uh, there are officially 43 parties, but actually in the last elections, 28 ran. Really? Yeah, but only 10 got in because of that threshold law. Okay. Uh, so we didn't get in, so I'm not in the government, but okay. uh, we ran in three elections. Uh, I worked like... 11 years to raise the money to register the party. We registered the party, we had to get signatures. And don't think it was easy because a lot of people mm -hmm. in Israel, uh, a lot of Jews hate the Christians. Again, you have to remember, the Jews in Israel, half are from former Soviet Union and Eastern countries, right. Eastern Bloc, right. and the other half from Islamic countries. And uh, we just don't got, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Jews living in Israel. Yeah. So it's not like, uh, no, no taxation without representation. That's my right. motto. Uh -huh. And I say we have like 
500,000 Christian believers in Israel, and if it's about 35,000 uh, votes per member of Knesset, you're talking about 14, 15 members of Knesset, potentially, who could join my party, get into the Knesset. But it's going to take work. I'm overcoming 2,000 years of hatred between Jews and Christians. Yeah. The hatred has to stop. We've got to love each other. Yeah. Well, you had a real hatred for Germans because of the Holocaust, correct? Correct. correct. And today I love the Germans because I got to know them. Yeah. And, um, and you found out that they're not haters. They're was, great people. It was Hitler. They're great people. And um, there are stories from my own family from World War I. For example, Kaiser Wilhelm. I mean, people say, who's Kaiser Wilhelm? People don't even know who he is. But he was the leader of Germany in World War I. He was the only leader who gave kosher food to his Jewish soldiers in World War I. Wow. And the Jews disproportionately were awarded the Iron Cross for Valor in World War I. Mm -hmm. It didn't help them when the Nazis came to power. Mm -hmm. uh, the Nazis were an anomaly. And today, Germany, as a democratic country, is a friend of Israel. And the, the parallel example is Iran. Iran is a great country. The people, the Iranian people, are fantastic people. Yeah, great but they got this crazy country. regime. Yeah. And so for the last 40 years, it's been a hell. But I'm hoping, God willing, that God will liberate the people of Iran, mm -hmm. and we will go back to the good old days. Yeah. By the way, Arabs and Muslims, fantastic people. Yeah. But if they have a system that teaches to kill the Jews on Saturday, kill the Christians on Sunday, then that system has to be banned. Yeah, and, and uh, basically their, uh, their goal is to wipe Israel off the map. Right. See, the whole point is that people are saying, oh, the Jews should give up this piece of land, the Jews should give up that piece of land. No. But the problem is they don't want the land. They want to destroy it. They want to destroy everything. They want to kill the Jews on Saturday and the Christians on Sunday. Yeah. People don't understand Islam as a religion. That's what I do in the churches. And so, uh, you know, like Jerusalem is holy to the Christians and, and the Jews. Only. Huh? Only. You see, the whole story about Jerusalem. But they're promised to one. Huh? And Jerusalem is promised to one. But it's holy too. Well, it's it's promised to the Jews mm -hmm. and to all those who are part of the Abrahamic covenant. Yeah. The genealogy of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's mentioned seven times in the New Testament. I teach New Testament, and I'm just a regular Orthodox Jew. Islam says that the genealogy is through Ishmael, and that Ishmael was supposed to be sacrificed in Mecca at the Black Stone. So there is no mention of uh, Jerusalem at all in the Quran. In the Quran. There is no right. Jerusalem yeah. in the Quran. The, the Quran is specifically a book for Saudi Arabia, not for Jerusalem. And that's why I'm saying it, it would seem to me absurd mm -hmm. that you, there would be anyone who calls himself a Christian and he supports Islam against the Jews, yeah. theologically. Uh, anyway, so to get back to the party, uh, I moved to Israel in 1968, went to college, was in the army, got married, had children. 1990, I started coming to the States. 1990 was an interesting year because one and a half million Jews and part Jews, in other words, Christian Jews, mm -hmm. moved to Israel from Russia, the former Soviet Union. And all of a sudden, we have a new community which never existed. The immigrants who came from the Soviet Union. Now, what year are you talking about? 88, 89, 90, the, the collapse of the Soviet Union. I, I didn't realize that. They, I, I know that's the time that Perestroika and... and um, oh, it's all together, yes. No, I didn't realize that. I thought it was after 91 that the Jews started. No, no, no. They were coming okay. in the whole time. Okay. And I'll tell you the truth. To this day, they're, they're still coming in, praise God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, but there's a problem now because what we knew as the law of return was that if you had three Christian grandparents and one Jewish grandparent, for the Nazis, you were a Jew. Yeah. And you would be gassed in the gas chambers and right. cremated. Yeah. And that's the law. Now, what has happened is the, the, the ultra-Orthodox, the rabbis, the bureaucrats who are ultra-Orthodox, added a stipulation, which is not law, that if you believe in Christ, you cannot come into Israel. Wow. 
And if you live in Israel and you came from Russia and they discover that you're a Christian believer, they kick you out and send you back to Russia. It's like the modern day Pharisee. Exactly. And I know from my groups that I represent that there are today people, for example, in Russia or the Ukraine, mm -hmm. and they're Jewish by blood, they, they, they fulfill the law of return, but when they go to the Israeli consulate or the Jewish agency, they sign on the dotted line what their faith is. They say, we believe in Jesus. Then they're rejected. They're not allowed to come to Israel. But Hitler would have gassed them. Yeah. yeah. So I'm working to change that. Wow. So we have, um, I would say, uh, we have a population. Again, I want to remind you of one little thing. I moved to Israel when our population was 3 million. I gave you those letters from David Ben-Gurion. Yes. And at that time it was 3 million. Wow. And in 1999, 1999, we're 5 million. Today, we're 7 million Jews and Christians. And we have 2 million Muslims. So the population of Israel today is 9 million. And one of the things I talk about, and actually it's in the Red Book, uh, Islamic Threat Updates, I have a story here called the Edmonton Revelation. This is from 20 years ago. And I'm driving across the United States and Canada. I get in my van, I just drive. People here, I'm coming, yeah, come over. <laughs> how, do I, how much do I charge? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I get an offering. Yeah. And I got to Edmonton, I spoke in the church there, and then I went to the synagogue, Orthodox synagogue for Shabbat, and the rabbi introduces me, says, here we have Avi Lipkin, he's an Israeli army spokesman. The Christians give him 10 hours to teach, because I do these three-day seminars, three hour, hours mm -hmm. a night. And we Jews, we're not going to give him 10 hours, we're going to give him 10 minutes. When? At the end of the service, when we have the meal. I get up to speak, I get shouted down. Say, oh, you're anti-Islamic, you, we don't like it. You know, the Muslims were allies in Spain in 1492. Mm -hmm. And they didn't let me speak. And so a Christian lady attending the Orthodox synagogue every Shabbat, because Jesus went to synagogue on Shabbat. Mm -hmm. He read from the law, he read from the prophets, and then he gave, delivered a sermon. That's the way it is in synagogue today, 2,000 years later. So she got up and she said to them, if you're not going to let Avi speak, I have to tell you a little story. I am a social worker for the government of Canada. And I'm a caseworker for a Muslim Egyptian woman doctor who is in hiding in Edmonton. Why is she in hiding? Because they want to kill her. The jihad wants to kill her. And this is before ISIS. And what happened was she was like uh, 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 Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. But instead of being Christian, Catholic, she was Muslim. And she fed the poor and she healed the sick, but there was nobody backing her. And so she decided in her 40s, midlife crisis, let's move to Canada. So she gets, applies, is accepted. The day after the visa is approved, there's a knock on her door. And it's three jihadis, holy warriors. And they said to her, we know you're going to Canada. She said, how did you know? We know everything about you. We have our fanatic Muslims everywhere in the Egyptian government. And you're going to work for us. She said, what does that mean? Well, you're going to have one of the most popular clinics in Canada. All the Jews will come to you. All the Christians will come to you. The Muslims will come to you. And they have to fill out forms, names, addresses, telephone numbers, place of employment, telephone numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to hand this over to us. And when a war breaks out in the Middle East, or when there is some uh, order from jihad, international jihad, because of chaos, what are you having now in the U.S.? chaos mm -hmm. with all the demonstrations. Yeah. Yeah. We will give an order to the Muslims of Edmonton to kill the Jews and the Christians married to them in Edmonton. The Muslims wow. in Vancouver will kill the Jews and Christians in Vancouver. The Muslims in Toronto will kill the Jews and Christians in Toronto. And the doctor said, listen, you know me. I go to the mosque every morning. I give zakat. Zakat is, uh, is the uh, charity. I pray all the time in the mosque. You know, uh, they know her. But I'm also a doctor. I swore the Hippocratic Oath to heal people and save lives. And I don't believe in killing any human beings, even the Jews. Oh, you're not going to work for us. No, I'm not going to work for you. So they grabbed her best friend in her 40s, lady friend, and they slit the throat of the lady who was 40 years old, helping her in the clinic. And they said to her, if you don't work with us, that's what we're going to do to you. The next day, she had political asylum in the Canadian Embassy, and the Royal Canadian Air Force flew in a private jet to get her, and uh, she's in a 24-7 facility 
with Royal Canadian Mounted Police Protection. Wow. And so this Christian woman is her social worker. And then she said, you know, I work very closely with the Canadian police. The Canadian police say to me, 90% of the Muslims in Canada and probably the U.S. are peacekeeping, law-abiding people. 90%. Only 10% are terrorists. Now, if 10% of the, of the Muslims in America are terrorists, you're talking about 20, 30 million people. 10% of that is 2 or 3 million terrorists. And I know from my work all around this country, this great country, United States and Canada, that the mosques are armories and that they have weapons which are all legal. Everything's with licenses. Yeah. And they train and they're getting ready for the day of judgment because it says in the, in the hadith, Hadith is the Islamic sayings of Muhammad. Mm -hmm. It says, on the day of judgment, there will be a final battle with the Jews, and the Muslims will kill every last Jew on the face of the earth. And there will be some Jews who hide behind rocks and trees to evade death, and Allah will give mouths to the rocks and trees, and they will call out, O oh, Muslim pursuers, there is a Jew hiding behind me, come and kill him. Mm -hmm. And this applies also to certain Christians who are married to Jews, or love Israel, or pastors. So they are cataloging. The Muslim communities are cataloging the Jews and certain Christians in Canada, in the U.S., Mexico, Latin America, Europe. And at some stage, there is going to be a massive move of Jewish and Christian immigrants to the land of Israel. And my party will be the biggest party in the Knesset. Because when 10 million Jews and Christians move to Israel, I'm going to have the biggest party in the Knesset. So that, that's where I'm working toward. Wow. And I believe that ISIS will take over Jordan and Saudi Arabia, blow up the oil wells. All of this is connected to the one world government. And what's going to happen is Israel is going to have to go in and take Jordan and Saudi Arabia because when you have those black flags of ISIS along the Jordan River, they're going to be digging tunnels under the river yeah. Yeah. and infiltrating Israel like they did with Gaza and Lebanon. So we're talking about our borders growing. We're talking about our population growing, mm -hmm. Jews and Christians together. Hmm. Any questions? Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just wondering, uh, how, how can we help you with the Bible Belt? Well, at, at this Bible time, block. Bible Block, I would say at this time, number one is prayer. Because there are a lot of people out there that don't like what I'm doing. Yeah. In fact, you have a lot of threats on your life, don't you? There are threats. Um, you know what? I feel that if this is what God wants, I'm not afraid of anything. And, uh, yeah. But what I will say is uh, we need to increase the awareness of Jews and Christians. Yeah. And I'm very sad to say that uh, the only place that invites me are Christian churches. Jewish people at, at, under no circumstances will have me speak because nobody wants, to hear, nobody wants to hear about the end of Judaism in America. Yeah. And that there may be blood flowing in the streets. They all say, never again, never again, with the Nazis. Yeah. But they're not seeing forward with the Islamic plans to kill now, the Jews. Is it a, a, um, the moving to, uh, I forget the word. A, um, Aliyah? Aliyah. It is, it, somebody said that it, it is up 50% from, in, from coming from America. Yes, it's going to grow. It's because going to grow. there's more anti-Semitism going on. Now, I'm from Minnesota. Okay, that's my birthplace is Minnesota. I have a lot yeah. of family in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah sure, you betcha. Yeah. And um, there is a lot of hatred for the Jews up there because what has happened is um, they have, they've been so sympathetic to the Somalians that the Somalians have come over and taken a lot of, of uh, let me put it simply, uh, some people call it the ISIS capital of the United States. Right. Uh, let me say one thing. The Jewish people who suffered so much from the Christianity of Europe, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the, the Russian Orthodox, the Catholics, the Nazis, certain Protestants, obviously, came to America and didn't understand. I wanted to do a show on this. Mm -hmm. I, they didn't understand that the American Protestant system has by and large been totally blessing of the Jews. American Jews have been so accepted, but the, the idea of seeing a cross on the church steeple reminds them of the 
evil of what the European Christians mm -hmm. did to us, Holocaust, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I get into a lot of trouble because I say to the Jews, you need to go to church on Sunday. Oy vey, he's a Jew for Jesus. <laughs> I say, when you go to the church, you get to meet these wonderful people, and they love us. They do. You got to stop hating these people. They do. Because if you hate them, in the end, they're going to hate you back. Yeah, well, there, there are some Christian religions that, right. that are not sympathetic to the Jews. They, no, 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 They're I more agree. sympathetic to the Palestinians. I agree. But if we have, out of 2 billion Christians, 100 million born-agains that love Israel, we've got to work with those people. Absolutely. And get them ready to move to Israel. Because I think this tsunami of hatred, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just, you know, Muslims. It, it is indeed uh, the right-wing fanatics, and it's also Antifa. They all hate the Jews, and the Jews yeah. don't see it coming. Well, They're like deer one with their world. eyes glazing over in the traffic. It's that world, one world government that, that wants to take over. Uh, one last thing. I don't know how much time we have. How much time do we have you left? We have about five minutes left. I didn't talk about the Antichrist. Oh, let's do that. I'm the only Jew in the world who talks about the Antichrist. <laughs> when Islam the is... The only Orthodox Jew that talks yeah. about the Antichrist. Because there's Messianic that talk about him. I'm not a messianic, but I do believe in messy antics. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got to laugh a little bit. Got to lighten this thing up a little bit. If indeed Jordan and Saudi Arabia fall to ISIS, mm -hmm. which I think is going to happen, they're going to kill the kings, the royal really? families. To ISIS, huh? 80% of Jordan supports ISIS. I do not know that. You stick with me, dear. You're going to know. 92% of Saudi Arabia supports ISIS. Now, what is ISIS saying? Why do we kill the kings of Saudi Arabia and Jordan? Because they're selling oil to the West. They are collaborators with the enemy. We want to destroy Christianity. How do you destroy Christianity? You destroy the economy. How do you destroy the economy? You deny them the oil. So who's really the number one enemy of Islam? The globalists, the one world government. All they want is make money, yeah. enslave everyone and make money. Mammon. Mammon, okay. So if and when... The fanatic Muslims kill the kings, blow up the oil. In two weeks, the economy of the world is over. It's finished. So I believe that the intelligence services of the world will be monitoring very closely any threat, any possible threat to the oil wells of the Persian Gulf. And if the Islamic uh, fanatics decide to use atomic, biological, or chemical weapons against masses of population, this also will uh, destroy the world economy. That's why I don't believe in this depopulation thing. Yeah. Uh, I believe that f for the one world government to make money, they need more population, more people to control, more, more money to make. But like I said before, the day will come that Israel will have to intervene, and the one world government will actually command Israel to take Jordan and Saudi Arabia. And when Islam is banned, not by the Jews and not by the Christians, when it's banned by the one world government, then they will say to Israel, now that Islam is banned, you can go ahead and build your temple. Wow. And you know what? We of the one world government, we will help you, Israel, to build your temple in Jerusalem. Now, will the Israelis and the Jews say no? They'll say yes, okay. You proved that we were right all along. All this teaching I did in the first show about the archaeology, mm -hmm. we were right all along. Islam was wrong. So we will help you to build your temple, and we will then send our top leader, who nobody knows who that is yet, to officiate at your temple in Jerusalem, because it's going to be like a one-world religion. And so I don't know where this is all going. All I know is at this stage, I'm fearing a Holocaust here on American soil and in the West. Mm -hmm. Jews are going to be fleeing, going home. The Christians need to stand with the Jews, protect them, yes. and help them to get to Israel. Now, there's, um, we just have a few minutes left, and, and uh, I want to tell you a true story that happened here in, in Houston. Yes. This was several years ago. Uh, one, of, one of the pastor's, uh, pastor's wives, she wanted to take the youth and support Israel. So they went over by Bel Air, which is a beautiful area, shopping area, and they were holding up uh, signs to support the Jews. We love the Jews. And all of a sudden... The police had to come over and protect them. This is here in Houston, like five right. years ago. Right. And they had to help them to their car because they were getting so much threats and booing and things throwing at them. 
this is in Houston in the Bible Belt. Right. And um, so they got into their van and they started driving away, uh, uh, down, the, down the highway. And on both sides, there was people going like this. Which is what they did with the trains going to the concentration camps to say to the Jews, you're all going to die in the concentration camps. Wow. Yeah. And See, the churches just sang louder. And uh, same, same with World War II, yeah. Mm -hmm. The churches it just tried to pretend like it wasn't happening. And, uh, First the Saturday people, then the Sunday people. That's right. Yeah. You see, I'm a firm believer uh, in the uh, exceptionalism of the American people. I believe the American people will come out of this on top. But there has to be a revival in the churches. There has to be an awakening. That was the purpose there of these, has to be these, an these three shows that we've done. Absolutely. So he has a, a, a DVD called uh, The Bible Block. Do you want right. to say something about that? Yes. Why well, this is actually a very recent teaching I've done. This is a recent one. And it gives an update on where we are with the party. Okay. And uh, now it seems we have a stable Israeli government for the next three years. And I'm going to work very fastidiously to get, reach out to the different okay. constituencies in five languages in Israel and get them to vote for the party. So you want to you want to pray for for uh, Avi in the Bible Belt Bible Block Bible Block. You know, also, I'm, I'm sorry for also when I'm in the Bible Belt, they should pray for yes, me. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. And get this. And what else uh, should they would they should they get that has to do with this? Well, listen. This, the seven books that I've written are a, a collection of teachings that I've accumulated. Israel's Bible Block. That's the party one. Yeah. Yeah. This is the party one. And if you want to understand the Bible block and help you pray for it better, uh, you want to um, purchase this one. This is awesome. You can get it on his, on his website, uh, uh, avilipkin.net, and um, and those are the books from there. Those who want to get the uh, teachings I did with Chuck Missler, you can go to koinonia.org, I think. Yes. Koinonia.org. And, um, and also my DVDs. My son's DVDs are LipkinTours.com. Wonderful tours. If you want to take a, a, a tour in Israel and, and see and hear archaeological, archaeological proof. proof that the Bible is true, yeah. that's a place to go. And, and Avi, I just want to thank you for being with us. It was a three pleasure. Shows, three shows. And if you'd like to have him come and minister at your church, just go to his website, contact him. And you would enjoy him. He's not going to run out of stories and jokes. So God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Shalom. Amen. This is Ken and Mary Bostrom. We thank you for joining us today. We welcome you to watch us on KBNTV.TV, YouTube, Facebook, mbostrom2.com. Also listen to us on WRNO Shortwave Radio. Contact us at KenBostonMinistries.org. God bless you today.